you. Welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Huan Dao, and I'm speaking with... With Philip Brun. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? I'm uh, very good. Very excited to be here. All right, so where are you based, Phil? Uh, I'm based in Montreal City, in Quebec, Canada, where right. I work on Android software. And uh, how'd you get started in Android? I got started uh, about five years ago, where we were working. We were trying to see if mobile uh, could be a good avenue, and then Actually, one of my dirty secrets, I started more as an iOS developer, but oh. then I didn't do that long a time doing iOS, about a couple of months. And then we tried to do a bit more Android, and I had a background as a Java developer, and it felt like a way better fit for me. Oh, so you came to the light. You came to the good, tint, not the non-dark side, or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, um, so you're speaking at DroidCon uh, yeah. in New York today or tomorrow, or tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, um, and you're talking about the touch system, right? So what was kind of like, so if I'm a new developer, you know, usually what you know, we kind of, I kind of think about is in terms of gestures, right? Click, double, or uh, long press and stuff like that. Why, um, sorry, at what point do I need to transition to carry, like in what, pos what situations or would I start kind of getting into the touch system and digging into that? Why isn't just click and long press good enough for me? It always depends on what kind of apps you would want to be writing, but no matter what the interaction that you want to have with your app, it's always interesting to know how things could work under the hood so that if there's ever a need, you can always try to implement it yourself or you can have good ideas for other interaction that you could put in your app. So what we try to do in this talk, what I try to do in this talk, is just get you from the point where you have what you know, which is usually the good old click, click listener, mm -hmm. and then try to talk about what are the motion events, what are the gesture detectors, how can you implement a fling, how can you implement a pinch to zoom, mm -hmm. how would the scroll view works, stuff like this, just so that you can have a little bit more knowledge mm -hmm. of how everything works under the hood. So, I mean, like, it feels like sometimes, like, the, like actually getting down to, like, registering, like, motion events and interpreting those as gestures always seems kind of tricky and scary. Um, you know, just instead of just using a nice old gesture detector and calling it a day, can you can you like kind of list out for everybody maybe like kind of your top two or top three tips for maybe things that they should watch out for when you're doing touch events or things that you know people kind of tend to make mistakes on? Yeah. So the uh, hardest part about the touch system is when you're implementing your own custom views. There are two basic methods that you have to override. You have the on intercept touch event and you have the on touch event methods. And if you don't override them correctly, you could break some guarantee of the system. So you have to make sure to always call your super methods just so that you don't break anything. Right, you right. have to make sure that you return true or false depending right, on what's the situation. Right. And that's kind of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about tomorrow, just to make sure that you don't break everything and you get a good experience. I always feel like, like, it's like just returning false or returning true in the wrong yeah. place just screws everything up. And I feel like there's like it's just that little thing that just kind of makes everything blow up. And yeah, and when you don't know about it, it says, I'm just going to return whatever and hope that everything works for the best. Yeah. I just launch my <laughs> app and if it works, well, fine, Woo! I'm good. But then again, in like two weeks, the app doesn't work anymore. You don't know why. So um, something else that, uh, that you're involved with is DroidCon Montreal. And yes. And you're one of the organizers, correct? Yeah, one, I was one of the organizers. I had two, very, two others very talented organizers with me, Marcos and Esther. Mm -hmm. And it was very fun to organize. So how did that get started? Like, what made you guys say, all right, we need a DroidCon yeah. in Montreal? Well, actually, it was not really my idea at first. In fact, my colleague, Marcos, uh, attended the DroidCon in New York the year before and he had so much fun there. He said, we have to bring this event to Montreal. We really have to. And then he got us all on board and we started working days and nights on this until it was uh, finally the time. It was a pretty good conference. It was yeah. a big success. I heard a lot of good things about it and you're doing it again this year? Or we did? will do it again this year. Nice. Yes. Okay. Um, so. Actually, it's something else that a lot of people might know you from your really fabulous set of yeah. keyboard. So uh, Phil did a series, I guess, of G Plus posts, which you should check out if you haven't heard of it, <laughs> on awesome keyboard shortcuts in Android Studio. And I actually found a lot of them that I really liked. I had no idea right, that you cool. could extract string resource. That was like my favorite one. <laughs> um, but what is your favorite? Uh, I have a bunch of favorite ones. So we have the, uh, the obvious one, I like to know all the shortcuts just by their name, which I think is Command Shift A or something like this. But one of the, one of my favorites that is really not that well known is actually when you could, in the debug view, when you can mark fields um, with, with the label. So you just 
go on the field, you mark it, says, all right, this is my view. Yeah. And when you see it later in your debug, there is still your label and you can say, oh yeah, that's the field I was looking yeah, for. Yeah. And even better than that, and that thing that pretty much nobody knows is that once you've marked the subject, uh -huh. even your watch, your, your yeah, watch the paint, watches, you yeah, can fine. do something like uh, debug label underscore the name that you gave it, mm -hmm. and then you can find it from everywhere, even if you're not in this scope anymore. So when you want to observe something that's a, is a singleton or something right. very hidden, you want just to check a state throughout your debugging session, uh -huh. it works all the time. So, oh, so that's called label? That's like it, the label? It's, it's a call, um, what is it called? It's mark, mark object, it's F3 when okay, you're in object. the bug uh, panel. And then again, in your, um, in your watch panel, yes. when you watch variables, oh. you can see it like prefixing debug something, just to complete it and everything will work. I really like that, because, especially when you just mentioned singleton, because it's always like when you're doing watch, it's always about context, right? So sometimes yeah. it's kind of hard to pull out certain things like singletons when you, it's not in necessarily in- Exactly, like, so you the, want it in context. context. Yeah. You want to, you're in one place, you want the context from another place. Right. And it helped me a lot of time, especially when you're trying to debug something where there should only be one instance and then there might be a second one or you're not sure if the object was recreated uh, meanwhile. So that's one that I use in a long debugging session and saved me a lot of time. Nice. Otherwise, a bunch of stuff, the, all the refactoring is awesome just to extract a variable, a constant or a field with yeah, one yeah, simple just, shortcut. Yeah. It's easy, just stuff that you know that we do all the time. So but we're too yeah. lazy to always type it out. So just extract it and call it a day. In fact, I don't even remember all the shortcuts because it's become a muscular memory. I just use <laughs> yeah, them all right? the time. I don't remember. Well, that's why I was kind of like going like this when I was thinking of mine. It kind of just becomes like, well, it's that one, and I don't even know what it is anymore. It's just more like <laughs> that one, you know, that one. Exactly. Um, you just yeah. have to go through it and just use them enough until they become a muscular memory, and then you're fine. Have you checked out any of the new like uh, Android Studio features that were released in like the last was it last month? Yeah, well, so far I'm um, very excited about the new GPU profiler. Yeah, I'm always just trying to see if I'm busting my 16 millisecond <laughs> time frame, and then at least I can have it straight in the IDE. So that's kind of nice. The new memory uh, profiler is also awesome. Oh yeah. And uh, one thing that I've been using uh, recently, so quite. An, an old feature, but just to be able in your debug view just to see a bitmap, just to make sure it's the good yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I found it funny at first, I would never use this, but I used it a lot. It's on yeah. very particular cases, but when you do, you love it. Nice. Um, I'm really, I can't wait for the SVG, gener just SVG to PNG yeah. generation. I'm just like waiting for that so much. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, it we- so much time. Yeah, I mean, so, like, so where can people find you on the internet? Uh, they can find me on my G Plus profile at the Plus Philippe They can find me on Twitter at uh, Pebro. And they can also see me on my blog uh, on developerphil.com. Okay, great. Oh, and where can people find out about DroidCon Montreal? Sorry? Where can people find out about DroidCon Montreal? Uh, we will soon make announcements. Okay, cool. So um, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great DroidCon, and we will definitely uh, post a link to your uh, talk whenever it comes up in the show notes. Perfect. So thanks for joining us, everybody. Thanks for joining us, pleasure. Phil. Thanks and for me. Absolutely. Um, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.